Hello there beautiful people and welcome back again to On How channel. For people that don't know, my name is Enes, I'm working for you. So if you have any questions, any video requests, make sure to drop on below in a comment. I would be happy to make a video for you. And for people that do know, welcome back. Please be a witness for that <laughs> because I made over 200 videos on Shopify customizations and they were mostly requested by you guys, I mean subscribers. And some people I know they are not subscribers but I'm fine with that. I still make the video for them. So don't hesitate, if you have any video requests, you don't have to subscribe, just drop me a comment, I will be happy to make a video for you. Or actually, I think you should consider subscribing now, because mostly I was sharing like small edits, because I didn't have time for this channel to be honest, but right now, it's a very different chapter on this channel. Now I will be sharing completely customizable sections that you can add on your Shopify store, you can literally build a Shopify team by just using my sections, because they are highly customizable and very flexible and we don't use any third-party libraries at all. Everything is hard-coded. And this video should give you an idea actually, because in this video, I will be showing you how to add a sale, flash sale pop-up on your Shopify store that will be triggered when the user leaving the page. And yes, you heard that right, it will uh, actually uh, track the mouse cursor and once it tracks, the mouse cursor is going to close the page then the pop-up will show up. Or actually you can customize it and set it to uh, show the pop-up based on delay, like time delay after the page load, like 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 60 seconds, then the pop-up will show up. And the pop-up actually has way more customizations than you need. Hold on a second, while I'm talking, let me show you actually. So by the way, this is the Shopify down team. So as always, I start with a completely blank team, nothing on it. Then each video I do uh, small customizations. So by the 70 or 80 video, the team will be completely different. It will be unrecognizable and it will have way more options and sections and so on. Just like now you see, this is down team, completely new. The only thing I added is this like here, this is a review carousel as you can see. And this review carousel, it shows all the reviews in one section from Google, Facebook, Amazon, Etsy, all in one section and you can filter through them to show only one review source as you want. But what I'm about to show you in this video, so you see the mouse cursor now, you see what it is, right? Let me go to the mouse cursor just like I want to close the, the page, right? So I will go with the mouse cursor. Oh, where are you going? So <laughs> the pop-up will actually have a trigger and it will track, as I said, will track the mouse cursor to show where exactly is the user is trying to do. So if it's trying to close the page, then the pop-up will show up. And this is highly customizable pop-up. You can add, this is a video background, by the way. You can set a video background, you can set a picture background, you can set even a gradient color background. And it's very customizable. It has a button and this timer, as you can see, you can customize the timer, the colors, everything. And below, there is a button here where it says use code, as you can see. So if I click on it, let me click on it, copy to clipboard and it copied the discount code that you can set by yourself. And no, this is not an application. This is a section. <laughs> this is an invisible section that doesn't show up on your store. It's only for the pop-up and you can set the trigger and everything else. Hello back, beautiful people. I'm from the future. I'm just joking. <laughs> I apologize. I actually realized after checking out the footage, I didn't show you guys how it looks like on the mobile. So let me do that. As you will see in the video, we have actually different settings for the trigger because on the mobile, you cannot actually, there is no way actually to detect uh, if the user wants to leave the page or no. So on the mobile, you have to set a time delay. A time delay, how long uh, until the pop-up will show up? Five seconds, four seconds, 20 seconds, up to two minutes. Because on the desktop, as you saw guys, you can actually track the mouse cursor. So you will see, or actually the code will see when the user uh, is attending to close the page then the pop-up will show up. But on the mobile, there is no way to do that. Let me show you it again for the second time. So this is the mouse cursor, as you can see. Let me hover just like you wanna close the page. Then it will show up, as you can see. But on the mobile, there is no way to know that. So let me close this and let me uh, switch to the mobile version and show you. I did set it to four seconds, I think. Uh, let me reload the page and see. So one, two, three, four. Ta -da! Here it is, as you can see. Four seconds that it set it to. And yes, you can set different designs. Actually, you will see that in the video. So let's just get back to the original video. And let me quit talking again and show you how actually it works and how you can customize it and how it functions. So let me close this pop-up right here. You can close it, obviously. And let me get back to Shopify dashboard. If you are already in Shopify dashboard, click on the online store, then click on Teams, then click on the three dots on left of Customize and click on Edit Code. 
Because yes, as I said, this is a custom section by using your own code, no apps, no monthly subscription, nothing like that. So click on the sections folder, as you can see and on the left panel, click on it and it will show you a bunch of sections and click on add new section right here. It will show you this prompt and the name for the section you want to add and type in flash dash, just like you see. Oh, I mistyped flash, flash dash uh, sale dash pop up just like you see, you, and you don't, uh, you don't have to write the extension for the file, just the name for it, and click on done. It will create by default some code in here, make sure to remove the whole code, including the brackets, as you can see, then obviously head back to the description box and you will see a link for the code in my website, click on it, then download the section file, or actually just wait and watch until you see how it functions, how it looks like, and how it works, then see if you are interested, go down and get it. But for now, let me assume that you already got it. After you did so, just open it any like text editor. Let me drag this down so you can see. For example, this one. Open it any text editor, right click, copy, then simply paste it in here. After you paste the whole code in here, and as I said, we don't use any third party libraries here. Everything is hard coded. So there is no links, no servers connecting to your Shopify store and link applications. Applications, they usually require server. So when you install like four applications on your Shopify store, you are literally connecting to four different servers. That's why they affect the loading time of your Shopify store. So let me click on the save button. And after that, let me get back to the dashboard, get back to the dashboard, then click on customize button. Because as I said, this is a section, so we need to add it. But the section is invisible, it will not uh, be visible. So click on the plus button uh, anywhere on the Shopify store because as I said, it's invisible. Let me so show you that. So click on add section, scroll all the way down and here is flash sale 3D, click on it. It didn't show up, nothing shows up because it's invisible and it's only a pop-up. But on the settings here, you can see a lot of settings. Check out how many, every little option, it's customizable. So you can make sure it's actually unique. Let me show you that for a second. The first thing is the desktop size scale. So the scale for the pop-up, the size for the pop-up. It will resize the whole pop-up, the whole elements in the pop-up evenly. So you don't have to like mis-resize an element and, uh, and it will not look good. So this one will actually resize the whole element accordingly. For my case, I'm gonna keep it as the one because one is perfect. That's why I set it by default to one. And by the way, I added description for each uh, option that I think will be a little bit confusing for you guys, I added a description for it. And also, each section on my channel will come with a PDF file that I did write myself with a comprehensive guide on how to use the set that particular section and each option, how to customize it, and what's the best case you can use for it. And plus the description for the options that I mentioned right now. So this one says, resize the entire pop-up proportionally on the desktop. And this one for the mobile, because yes, we have to have different settings for the mobile and desktop. The screen on the mobile are not same as the desktop, obviously. So below it is the trigger settings, and this is very interesting. So how you want the pop-up to show up, the trigger option. So by default is the mouse cursor near the, the top. So once it tracks, as I said, it tracks the mouse cursor, and when it detects the mouse cursor is going to close the page at the top, like going like this to close the page, then it will show the uh, pop-up. But if you don't like this option, you can set it as a time delay. So if you, for example, let's just say I said time delay. If I said time delay, this option will be uh, disabled. Only this option will work because it's based on time delay. So you can set how many seconds after the page is loaded or the user access the page, how many seconds uh, passed until the pop-up would show up. Nah, I don't know if this is a good idea, but some people will like that. But for my case, I'm gonna keep it as mouse cursor near the top. And in here, this option is for it, so you can set uh, how close the mouse cursor reaches the top, then the pop-up will show up. I would recommend you to keep it as 50, but some people will have like larger uh, headers, then you can increase, decrease the number, sorry, or increase it. In my case, I'm gonna keep it 50. Now I will recommend you to keep it 50, then you check. And this option is only for desktop because on the mobile, <laughs> obviously there is no mouse cursor on the mobile. And I will get to that in a second. So let's just scroll down for the mobile settings now. So if you set at the first one, you set it as time delay, you can enable 
this option right here so you can set a different time delay only for the mobile. So let's just say you do time 10 seconds on the desktop, you can set different time 15 seconds or 5 seconds on the mobile. You don't have to follow the exact delay on the desktop. But in my case, we didn't set as desktop. So you can here, you can, we did set, sorry, on the time delay. So in here, you can set the time for the mobile. Because as I said, there is no mouse cursor on the, the mobile, then you have to use the time delay. Let's just do like a five, right? Let's just do three, two actually, or three, three, four seconds. Okay, let's keep it four seconds. And below it is show only per one, uh, once per session. And I added description for this one so you can read by yourself. It, when you check it, the pop-up will only show up one per, uh, per one browsing session. So it will use cookies to determine the user if he get back to the website the second time or the first time. So if you enable this option, it will only work one time when the user access the website. If he leaves and come back, it will not show up. If you disable this one, it will show up every time the user come back to the, to the website. So this is a, a preference. You can pick which one you want. And below it is the desktop background settings as i said you can set a gradient color you can set a video you can set an image and yes each option you can set it for the desktop here and for the mobile is set our separate option because some mobile browsers will actually block the video option it will not it will not display because they, they do block the autoplay option on the pop-ups so because it, they say it uh, interrupts the user experience something like that anyway so in my case in here I will do video for the desktop this time and below what you can set the picture this one will only work if you set it make sure make sure make sure to play to pick first which one you want in my case video this one will be disabled you don't have to set background image in here you need to paste the link for the video and make sure it's a full link that ends with .mp4 as you can see it says here make sure the ends the, the video link uh, ends with that mp4 for example in here uh, shopify fi finds make sure to upload the video that you want however make sure to compress it make sure to compress the video so it will be smaller it doesn't take much time to load uh, in my case i already have a video here let me copy it let me get back in here and i will paste the video in here and click on it and that's it i have the video and below it is the desktop video blur amount because we have some text on the pop-up, so we have to add some blur to the video so the text will show up properly. Uh, in my case, I think five is good. Yeah, let me do six. Six is good. I think the five, I did set the default settings for this one as the perfect version. However, you are free to play around with these to pick the exact amount you want. In my case, I'm gonna keep it as six because six, I think it looks good. And this one for the image, which is the settings for the image. We didn't set image, we set a video, so we don't need this option. And below it is the mobile background settings. Because as I said, you can set different styling from the background for the desktop and for the mobile as well. If I click on this, it will show me again, video, image, and gradient color. For the mobile, I'm going to go for an image. Yeah, I think image looks good. And let me select an image from here. Let's just go for this one, yeah. The trees, the blue sky looks good. Yeah. And this one for the video, we didn't use it. We use image. So this one will be canceled. And the mobile video ad blur would be canceled because we didn't use, use video. And mobile image blur, this one will work because we used an image. So let me add like three, just three. Yeah, it's good. And below it is the content settings because as I showed you, the pop-up has uh, text on it. So you can customize the text. This, the size for the heading as well and below it is the subheading as well and the size for the subheading and below it if you remember there is a timer because as i said it's a pop-up flash sale pop-up with a timer countdown timer so in here you can set the hours how many hours and how many like a digit sorry this one for the size for the uh, digit the number size uh, as i said each uh, option i did set it by default to the perfect size uh, 42 is the perfect size you want to increase the size increase them and the minutes as well how many minutes and the seconds and below them is the option if you want to loop the countdown when it's finished so what what the behavior the pop-up should have once the pop-up will finish but i don't think someone will keep opening a web page for 10 hours that's impossible keep in mind this is only for scarcity technique this is only for scarcity so you can make uh, customer feels like he's losing on a discount right and i think you already know that 
and below it is the height pop-up when the countdown expires. So once the timer expires, what should they do? Should they hide the pop-up uh, the pop or keep it? But if you want my opinion, you don't need either of these options because you will not need them. And below, but you're free to customize them, as I said. And below is the bottom settings because there is a button on the and pop up and it says about the offers. You can customize the text on it and you can set a link for it. Let me go for a collection. Let me set a collection jewelry, yeah. And this option, if you want the button will open the link in a new tab, which is recommended. I would recommend you to do that. So well, let me enable this. And the button color, this is the color for the button. Let me go for blue maybe. Let's just go for lighter blue, yeah. Yeah, let's just do that for the background button color and this one for the button text color I'm gonna keep it as black and the button uh, border color. Uh, no, not that. Let's just do blue and the text button size and the button vertical padding and the button horizontal padding because if you in, uh, if you add more text you may be needed to be have more width or have more height. I added the options and as I said you have every option that you can think of. You don't even need, I add them there. And below is the discount because I'll show you there's a button where you click on it. It says called copy it, which code? The code that you're gonna write in here. So in here, you can type in any code like discount for example. Uh, and once the user clicks on the copy the code, it will copy this, this word discount, okay? And yeah, if you didn't write anything, like if you keep it like empty like this, the button will not show up. The button will not show up to copy the code. But I'm gonna keep it just for demonstration. And this is the text on the bottom. Make sure to, like for example, this one, I'm gonna do a discount, copy discount. We use called discount. And below is the copy success measure. Once he clicks on it, the message is gonna show them. It shows copy it to clipboard. And you don't need to customize this, but I add it anywhere. So <laughs> you can, you are free to customize anything you want. And this is copy the button background. It's by default transparent, as you can see. You can set any color you want. I'm gonna keep it as transparent. And the text on it, the color for it, as well as the button border color, transparent, same as the background. And below is the vertical spacing uh, settings. And I added comments for each option, so you would know and you would understand what each uh, option is for. And the first one is the space, the vertical space between heading, the block, and the countdown timer. So you can customize this pop-up however you want. Below it is space before the subheading, space before the countdown, space after the countdown, space before the main button, space before the copy button. Every little option you can think of, I already have it. And these options, you don't need them, I just add them for the sake of schema. Anyway, so <laughs> let's just click on the save button and see that in action. Now it should work actually in the, inside the team editor. If I hover over the mouse cursor like the header, here it is. As you can see, it shows up. Eh, the, the colors is not that good. And also have the hover effect as you see. Once I hover over them, it moves with the cursor as you can see. But the most important thing is the, the flexibility of this pop-up and also the option that you can set it to track the mouse cursor. So once the user is actually leaving, trying to leave the page, then it will show the pop-up. And that's very, very good for conversion rate if you want to increase the conversion rate a little bit more. And if you have any suggestions or any video requests, make sure to drop them below and I'll be happy to reply to you the information you need or even make a video for you. But for now, I take my job, but it's done. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.